Can you guys imagine if every single day of your life you were going to a celebration, a festival, a party, a wedding reception. If this was every single day of your life. Well, according to Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 15, there is a kind of person who does this. Every day of their life is a feast. Notice with me Proverbs 15 and verse 15. Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 15. It says in this verse, All the days of the afflicted are evil, but the cheerful of heart has a continual feast. So I want to think about this verse tonight, the continual feast of a cheerful heart. The word cheerful is a Hebrew word that means glad, happy, joyful. The person who has a happy heart is at a continual celebration. In fact, the Bible tells us in Proverbs 17, verse 22, a joyful heart is like good medicine. You get around a person who's got a happy heart. They have a joyful heart. They're glad. It's like, man, that was medicine. Now, guys, where does a person get such a heart? Because the Bible says this kind of a person is like he's at a continual, he's always at a wedding reception every day. He's always at a party. He's always at a feast. He's always at a festival every day. The guy with a cheerful heart is at a continual feast. How does a person get such a heart? Let's watch this together. Go with me to Psalm chapter 16 and verse 8. Psalm chapter 16 and verse 8. Notice what the scripture says. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad, and my whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure. The person who God is ever present, he is right there. That guy says, because of this, my whole being rejoices and my heart is glad because God is right there. I've set him at my right hand. Notice Psalm chapter 21 and verse 6. Psalm chapter 21 and verse 6. You make him glad with the joy of your presence. He says in Psalm 16, I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my whole being rejoices. The person whose God's presence is right there. He says, he make, God makes me glad by the joy of his presence. Notice Psalm 32, verse 11. Psalm chapter 32, verse 11. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, O righteous and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. What is it that's making this person have a happy heart, a joyful heart, a glad heart? It's God himself. It's being in his presence, the fact that he's right there. That's what's giving this guy a continual feast. Notice Psalm 33, verse 21. For our heart is glad in him. Why? Because we trust his holy name. Lord, I am, I am just enjoying you. I'm trusting you. I believe you. Therefore, my heart is glad. My whole being rejoices. And God says, you see a person that has that kind of a heart, a cheerful heart. It's full of joy and happiness and gladness. That guy's like at a continual party. Notice Psalm 43 and verse 3. Psalm 43 and verse 3. He says here, Send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Then I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy, the joy that surpasses everything, far exceeds everything. God, bring me to you. When I'm in your presence and your light and your truth come in me and they bring me to you and you're right there present, that's when my heart's glad because I trust you. Notice Psalm 63, verses 5 to 7. Psalm 63, verses 5 to 7. 
My soul will be satisfied as with fat and rich food, and my mouth will praise you with joyful lips when I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the watches of the night. For you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings I sing for joy. Guys, if my heart has not been happy, not been glad, what is it that I'm lacking? Lord, I'm not spending time in his presence. I'm not resting under the shadow of his wings and trusting him. And that's why my heart is not glad. It's not joyful. But that's where I get that heart again. I get that heart in his presence. Look at Psalm chapter 90 and verse 14. Psalm chapter 90 and verse 14. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Not one day this person's not glad. Not one day his heart's not cheerful. Why? Because he's so satisfied with God's love. He says, at nighttime I rest under the shadow of your wings. I'm meditating you in the bed, and as I do, my heart rejoices. And then in the morning, I'm thinking about your steadfast love, and I'm glad all my day. Psalm 92, verse 4. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your work. At the works of your hands I sing for joy. God, as I just spend time with you, trust you, and think about you, and think about what you've done, this makes my heart glad. Psalm 119, verse 111. He says in Psalm 119, verse 111, Your testimonies are my heritage or my inheritance forever. They are the joy of my heart. You see, a person with a heart that's happy in God, happy because of God's promises, happy because of God's work, happy because of his word, this guy, the state of his heart governs his outward conditions, as one person said. It doesn't matter what's going on in the outside. Inside, he's having a continual feast. He is happy. He is joyful. Now watch how this goes in the New Testament. Look at Romans chapter 15, verse 13. Romans chapter 15 and verse 13. May the God of hope, this is one of our prayers, fill you with all joy and peace in believing. It's as I'm believing God, as I'm enjoying his presence, as I'm delighting in this, as I'm resting under the shadow of his wings, and I'm believing who he is and believing what he said, guess what happens? I am filled with all joy as I believe. What does the Bible tell us in Galatians 5, verse 22? The fruit of God's spirit, one of them, is joy. It's as a person has God's spirit and is is enjoying God, trusting his promises, watching his work. This man is happy. He has a steady state inside of him, which is joyfulness, which is gladness. This guy is at a continual party. Bible, remember the prayer, prayer, one of the other Bible prayers we pray, Colossians chapter 1, verse 9, I have not ceased to give thanks for your remembering you in my prayers. One he says and things there is that God would strengthen you according to his mind for all endurance and patience with joy. That man, that would just be the steady baseline of your life. I'll tell you what, whenever I get around that guy or that girl, they're always happy. There's just like a steady baseline in their life. Why? That guy has a secret. He has somewhere else that he's getting his joy. He's not getting it in the circumstances. They can change. And if, I'm, if my only reason for my joy is my circumstances are great, I'm very, very immature. Anyone can be happy when all oh, everything is exactly the way you want it to be. But what about when it's not? But there's a kind of a person who has this steady state. Their life is a continual feast. Who is it? The person with a cheerful heart. And where do you get that kind of a heart? You get it in God's presence. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 16, two, this is the second short, those two verses in the whole Bible, we have two words to them. He 
Anyone know there's one very short, John Jesus. chapter 11. Jesus wept. Jesus wept. And there's one other two-word verse in the whole Bible. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 16. Give yeah, thanks. Rejoice always. Rejoice always. Imagine that. The Lord says, I want you to be joyful. How many times, Lord? When? Why, why can't I be if I really know God? I know his promises and I see his work and I'm trusting him. I'm believing him. Then I can rejoice always. Have a glad and happy heart. I like what one commentator said. He said, true, the true and real happiness of a man is defined not by external things, but by the state of his heart. In which, in spite of a proper and prosperous condition, a secret sorrow may gnaw. And in spite of a sorrowful condition, he may be at peace and joyfully confident in God. What's the secret? He's got a continual feast going on on the inside. That's why the Bible says about the guy who has real joy. Psalm 4 verse 7 says, you have put more joy in my heart than they have when their grain and wine abound. Like, that's real joy. Anybody, when they got an awesome, the bank account's overflowing, and everyone's doing great, they had a delicious meal, anybody can be happy in those cases. That's normal. What is unexplainable is to see a person outwardly, maybe things are not ideal, but yet they are rejoicing. There's something else they have their joy is in. I love Habakkuk chapter 3. Notice what this says, famous scripture, Habakkuk. If you can find this, it's in the Old Testament, everybody. Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum. Habakkuk. Thank you, Joel. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17. You know, my mother, when I was growing up, named Darbassanound after a minor prophet. His name was Obadiah. <laughs> God ever gives me a dog, maybe I'll name him Hab. <laughs> back in chapter 3, verse 17, notice what it says here. Though the fig tree should not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, the produce of the olive fail, and the fields yield no food, the flock be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will take joy in the God of my salvation. God, nothing in my life is going right. The flowers aren't blossoming, the fruit's not bearing, the olives are not producing, the fields have no food, and there's no oxen in the stall. Outwardly, there's nothing to be excited about here. Yet I'm rejoicing. I rejoice in you. I rejoice in you. And by the way, who was saying this? A prophet at the time when things were very bad for the Jews. And Habakkuk says, come on, everybody. Let's get happy in God. Amen. Think about the Apostle Paul writing the book of Philippians. Sitting in a Roman jail. He talked about uncomfortable. 2,000 years ago and saying there, in that jail, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. And where is the rejoicing in? It's rejoicing in the Lord. Man, you'll be a continually happy person if your mind and your heart are thinking about him and his promises and his work. You can be happy. I don't care what the circumstances are. And in fact, the Lord commands you to. He commands you to rejoice always. And the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 1, in this you rejoice. Though now for a little time you have been grieved by various trials, because although you have not seen him, you love him. And though you do not now see him, you believe in him. And you rejoice with a joy that is unexplainable and filled with glory. What gives people an unexplainable joy? Because when because for other people that look on the outside, it's not explainable because your circumstances aren't ideal. And yet you still have this abiding joy, this glad heart. 
Where? Because they believe in him, the Bible says. I believe in him. I believe he is who he says he is. And what he says the world is, it is. And what he says about me is what it is. And what the future he says will be, will be. I believe you, God. I believe in your character. I believe all your promises. I thank you for them. I see what you're doing in my life. And I am glad and I rejoice. Now, guys, that is a life that gives off the fragrance of Jesus. I honestly believe if you and I knew Jesus, he was a wonderful person to be around, mm -hmm. happy and joyful. That's why one of the reasons I love the first season of The Chosen, because I think that it really displayed Jesus in a way that the Bible portrays him, happy. And the more we are controlled by his spirit, the happier we're going to be. That's one of the fruits of the spirit. If I'm not... That is a neon sign to you that you're not trusting and you're believing God. You don't know his promises. You don't see his work. And the fact that you're miserable is a neon sign. I love the famous quote of Jonathan Edwards. We have it on the front page of our website. God created man for nothing but happiness. Ultimately, that's why he made you to be happy about him. Hey guys, a heart that is glad in God has a continual feast. This is the person who's always at a party, always at a wedding reception, always at a feast and always at a festival. Who is that person? The person whose heart is glad in God. Lord, I pray that you will Continue to help us grow, to help us to quit looking to things of the earth. The wells that always leave us feeling empty because circumstances change. But you are the same. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And all your promises are yes. All the promises of God find their yes in Jesus. And if you have Jesus, you have all of God's promises. Everything is well. Lord, may our lives reflect it. May our lives reflect that we have an awesome Savior. I pray in Jesus' name.